Welcome to today's episode of the Water Lab Podcast. I'm James Marshall and I've got a real good guest for you today. But firstly, a quick mention of our sponsors who have helped bring this podcast to you. Firstly, Straight Face Razors have a deal for Water Lab listeners, which is 50% off your first order, which you will get four sharp five blade heads and a razor delivered to your door. To get your hands on one of these bad boys, head to thewaterlad.com and click the straight face logo. It's definitely worth a try. See for yourself how good this product is. Also, Todd's Racing, they're training winners for absolute fun. So go give them a follow on Facebook and Twitter. Or if you're looking for a trainer, look no further than the lad, Regan Todd. What a legend, what a lad. Also, Waterlad Coffee, words finally starting to spread how good this brew is. If you have coffee at your home, go order some Waterlad Coffee. Next time you've run out, you will definitely not regret it. Anyway, let's roll the intro. Waterlad, 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 absolute racing. Waterlad, 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 What a lad, righto, well it's not often you have someone post on social media that hits home with so many people and today's guest, he shared what he'd been going through and why he hasn't been playing and man, so many people could relate to this post, not just in rugby but in life. He's also a New Zealand rugby star having played for Northland, Tasman, Waikato as well as the Chiefs and he's currently with the Highlanders in Southland. But above all, he is an absolute lad who's happy to help others by sharing his experience. It is the great Solomon Alamalo. Welcome, brother. Cheers, mate. Thanks for having me on. Hey, no, honestly, thanks so much for coming on. Um, that post you put up the other day, like I said, was has affected so many people. So many people have um, been moved by that. So how's it been for you? Um, all, all good, man. Like, um, I was probably, yeah, I was real nervous about posting and stuff, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, just real surprised at just the overwhelming support and, mm. you know, just how many people are in that sort of similar position and um, that have reached out. So real um, overwhelmed um, by the support, bro. Yeah, mate, you got like 500 comments and stuff. Everyone's sending their love. Your inbox must have blown up as well. What were what were people sort of messaging you? Um, I think, yeah, for me, bro, I was like, well, the people I didn't know, eh? like, um, and just like uh, the younger footy players too, mm. just reaching out, uh, just stuff around. Uh, they really appreciated like the vulnerability and the openness of the post, and um, just that they were in a, they felt like they're in a similar situation, and um, it just really meant a lot to them that they weren't alone, sort of thing. So uh, that really hit home for me, bro, and um, yeah, really appreciated that they were vulnerable enough to sort of reach out as well and be open to me. So. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, it is cool. And there's vulnerability sort of is contagious, eh? Like once one person becomes vulnerable and opens themselves up, then everyone feels like they are now more comfortable to be vulnerable as well. So what you're doing has been massive and obviously the effect that you've seen already um, must be pretty must be pretty cool. Appreciate it, bro. Appreciate it. So what made you sort of do the post? When did you sort of get to the point that, mate, I, I need to share this journey? So I, I always sort of felt that... Um, I wanted to to like open up as I was sort of going through the process yep. of it, as I was going through like my return to train and stuff. But it was just sort of finding the right time because as well as our boys like sort of got into the final two and I didn't want to take away from that. Mm. And yeah, it was just more about the timing. So uh, just when I sort of felt on a rise and um, in terms of just how I was feeling and stuff, um, yeah, I just sort of felt it was probably the right time then. But yeah, it was actually one of my boys that are, uh, Posted in our group chat, man. Johnny Tuvasa's chick posted like a wee video, like a check in on, on your mates and yeah. just numbers around business, personal, and uh, or mind health. Um, and just sort of posted it, but he's never been one to sort of open up like that and um, get that. So, um, that was at like 12 in the morning, man. So, and I woke up at like five and I was just like sort of um, just reflecting on my own journey and my notes. And then, um, yeah, like two hours later. Just finally found the courage to to post it, and um, and yeah, it was like seven in the morning. But yeah, I was just yeah, real grateful that um, just overwhelmed that everyone was sort of supportive of it. So no, it was cool. And and how are you feeling now? You f- you're feeling good within yourself? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's just um, yeah, like yeah, it's not always going to be perfect day. Like mm. and um, there will be those days. But I've got like a uh, lot more tools than I did um, at the start of it to sort of. Uh, handle that and I've got a, a like awesome support system as well like my fiance and um, her family and my family too and my bro and stuff and yeah so 
I've got the tools there. It's just um, yeah, just recognizing like when I am starting to get in that slump. But like right now, man, I'm just in a real good headspace and looking forward to uh, miters and that too. So yeah, Mate, you're going to be hissing for Southland this year. <laughs> when you say tools, what sort of tools have you got, and what what sort of lessons have you learned from it? Um, just acknowledging that that I am in that spot, you know, like um, and I am feeling that way for a for a particular reason or for a certain reason, and then just like things like simple things like taking our dogs for a walk, um, you know, like getting out of the house and stuff. Cause I'm, I'm one to sort of just chill at home and be happy to just, um, you know, chuck something on Netflix and just stay home all day. So, um, just things like that, just simple things, man. I mean, just having to catch up here and there with one of your lads and one of your mates. So, um, things like that. And then just first thing when you wake up, just, you know, like, uh, maybe just name a couple of things you're grateful for the day. So yeah. um, it just, you know, puts things into perspective. So, yeah. And your body's feeling good, ready for Bunnings Cup? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll get there, right? It's like, uh, you've yeah, got four weeks. Um, I had my first week sort of club rugby I had out last week and um, that was, uh, yeah, that was all right. It was just um, more just, you can do as much running as you can, eh? But uh, <laughs> rugby fitness is just something else, eh? Just the yeah. impacts and stuff take away. Um, take away your breath a lot more. So <laughs> now nah, it's all good. I'll, I'll, I'll get there. I've got another four weeks to get um, a few more minutes now under my belt. But yeah. I think I'm just more excited than you. Yes. Like. So what was your training like at um, the Highlanders? You obviously went down there for the, um, the season, but were you training with the side or when did you sort of pull out of those team trainings? So it was the week before our Hurricanes game then uh, against yeah, the Canes. I think it was our home game. So it would have been the first round. Yeah. Um, after a bye week. Um, so I sort of, yeah, that's when it sort of, I pulled out then. Um, and then I probably had like a couple months off, just not really doing much in the team environment. And it was just more focusing on, you know, like me being, like getting more comfortable in myself and the gym and all that sort of stuff. And yeah. then, so once uh, I think it was the Australian comp came around, then that's when I sort of started going back into training with, the injured boys and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I didn't actually get to the point where I was back with the team, but I felt like I probably could have had to have been like a few more weeks or something, but mm. I got to a pretty good place where it was good that I was just, you know, like training with the injured guys and then, yeah, seeing the other fellas as well, like the team that were playing. So, mm. no, it was, it was a good experience. So when you said that you were you pulled out of that Hurricanes game, so talk to me about the lead up into that decision. What, what was the deciding factor to sort of pull out of that game? Oh man, so um, oh, it was so I, they hadn't actually named the team, but yeah. like, do you know how like they sort of, you know, like there's there's a team that they name, yeah. and you sort of get a good indication of oh yeah, yeah. Like if you put your hand up, then like that's the team. So yeah. um, my first the first day back, I had that training, and like I felt like I trained pretty bad. Like um, yeah, it was like more just pressure from me, just like to perform. Um, and put my hand up uh, and then the second day probably that was when it sort of just kicked in that nah like I wasn't feeling feeling right and I wasn't really like in the mind frame to, to you know like had I did get picked like be be able to run out on Forsyth and uh, try to play so which is like pretty big like mm. a lot of you know like for me especially like I've had times where like I haven't been right like mentally and physically but I still try to push through just to just to play that Saturday or Sunday, whatever it is. So I think um yeah, it was that that second day man was when I was just like, nah, I, I can't do it, you know, like something might really kick off if I try to. So yeah. So you mentioned that you'd sort of had that feeling before but you'd push through. When you'd push yeah. through on those previous um, occasions, had you played well or did you notice that your game was completely off and did that sort of impact why you didn't want to play that game? Yeah, so I've had times where I've like pushed through and like I've played played real well, but then I've had times where like I've just played like you know like I haven't played the best footy that I've played like I'm there, but I just wasn't there. Mm. And um, I think it was more just about actually putting myself first, but as well as that, like realizing that what was best for the team was that that I was in a better headspace. So yeah, like that's what I meant by like it just sort of started to dictate like. How I, how I felt as of myself as a person. Mm. Yeah, I just didn't want it to, you know, like the whole reason for us moving down was to have a fresh start. And, you know, like I just felt like 
that cycle was starting again for me. So, and that wasn't like that wasn't going to be healthy, especially with us moving down and it being our first year. So crazy. It's it's cool to hear, eh? But before we get too far, I do want to I do want to go back to the start for you and, and get a bit of a background. So, um, give us a bit of a rundown on what your life was like growing up. Yeah, man. So, um, family of well, seven, uh, two brothers, two sisters. Um, I'm the oldest. Um, and yeah, like, um, pretty humble, humble is, um, was brought up in Christchurch, yeah. um, went to St. Bede's College down there, man. Yeah. Um, good school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, yeah, it was, it, it was all good. It was just probably, well, for me anyway, I felt like looking back now, it's just a lot of things that I've seen and experienced that, um, I probably wouldn't want, you know, when father does come like my um, kids sort of experience too so and as well as that there were a lot of things that i did like sort of take into account that um like i i learned from as well and you know i was grateful for as well so, so that was all good it was probably just for me like i probably wish i played more sports because it was always just like rugby sort of thing yeah just rugby, rugby and, and you know like and i'm grateful as well because sort of helped to put me in the position i'm in now but uh, when I go watch, because we watch um, my fiance's uh, little brother play, and he plays like league basketball, like all these yeah, sports yeah. men, and like cool. So, so you said it was always rugby for you. What what age did that start? And did you always want to make rugby a career from a young age? Oh yeah, man. Um, yeah, rugby was yeah probably started playing when I was five. Right. Um, from in Christchurch called Mary Stelbian, and uh, I always wanted to. Um, to be a professional rugby player. Mm. Like my dad used to take um, me when I was younger to like, um, I think it was like the, when they'd have those like trials at um, Jade Stadium. Oh yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, And I've had a few like, yeah, I remember having heaps of photos and stuff like with like Mertz and like guys like that. Yeah. So um, yeah, it was uh, something I always wanted to do. And I wish like heading into it, I had more of an understanding and just like I said that like better tools around handling that um yeah that off field pressure and just that internal pressure for myself so yeah. did you always put internal pressure on yourself even at a young age or did you have pressure from your family your parents or did you feel a lot of pressure as a young kid yeah man yeah so like that's a lot of that came up from um my like counseling and psychiatry sessions man so it was more like after games like you know like had I if I didn't play well and stuff, then, you know, like I'd, I'd, I'd get a few comments here and there from uh, the old man. And, um, yeah, it was like it got better as I progressed and got older. But because I was so young, like, you know, like I, I held on to like a lot of those. And that's why there's so much internal pressure for myself because I felt like I was always seeking like my fulfillment or my, um, you know, from the game, but like someone else's. So, yeah. Um, and, you know, like, especially in, you'll know too, bro, like in, when we're playing and it's more like, oh, like, I wonder if the coaches were happy with how I played, you know, like, like it all comes down to, you know, like, um, not my man's opinion really, but um, I think it's just having that process and like the understanding that you've set your own goals and you'll be happy that you achieve them whether you get to run on the field with 23 or not. So, yeah. yeah. So you were also a bit of a schoolboy star, like you said, for St. Bede's College. And um, did you, even then, did you enjoy playing the game? Did you love just playing the game? Or was this sort of pressure still um, mounting on you a little bit? At the time, I probably felt like I, I did. Um, but looking back at it as well, like, yeah, I felt probably probably not as much because I just kept putting so much um, pressure on myself in terms of making certain teams and all that. Mm. But yeah, like... It's all, part, it's all part of it, especially in the environment we're in. Like, you set high goals, you want to achieve them and stuff, but I think it's just important, like, to switch off too, mm. having that time. But for me, it was just always like, no, nah, I can't do this because, like, of rugby or, you know, like, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. It got, I got better, though, like, as I played club because I got back and played. Um, I went to Sydney after my schooling and played with a lot of my mates, um, from school and yeah. like a lot of my classmates and like that was cool nothing better than playing club with um your mates and stuff so um yeah that was that was cool and then yeah just keep kicking on from here bro so mm. 
So then the um, Northland contract came about. How did that? How did that one come about? Just from your club footy yeah. coming up. Yeah, man. So I was in. Uh, I moved to Melbourne because I, I felt like I did a preseason with him, and um, yeah, uh, Dale Dale McLeod reached out and said, "Look, um, if you want to come back and try try play club here and see how you go." Um, and yeah, if all goes well, then you will be picked up. But, um, yeah, so I, I I didn't want to at first. I just wanted to stay in Melbourne. Yeah, uh, just to be close, yeah, to the fans and stuff. Um, but it's probably good that I did come back and play. Um, otherwise, all this wouldn't have happened. What was your plan going to be in Melbourne, Melbourne Storm? Yeah, so I had um, so I was with the like the Rebels group. There, there was just one contract left, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so and this other fella ended up getting it. So, like after that, that's sort of what like drew me. I was like, oh, like I'll try my end it up back home and see how I go. So, um, I think it's just yeah, just the timing sort of thing, and yeah. obviously opportunities elsewhere. Like awesome to stay loyal to you know the province that you grew up with, but mm. sometimes it is best to sort of move and yeah, put your hand put your hand somewhere else. So I was all good. And you definitely made an impression. You you pretty much played every game that season, eh? You're one of Northland's stars that year, straight first year of um, MPC. How do you find uh, it? Yeah, well, it was it was all good. Like um, oh, it, was, it was pretty funny. Like you know, like watching watching back at um some of the games. But yeah, it was it was a real enjoyable. In fact, that it was my first season, and I think we like played like there's a game like the game of three hearts. I think that was the most um, most memorable one was yeah. when we played uh, the ABs and um, counties played as well. Oh, so sure. that was cool experience, yeah. man. Yeah. Bit of a realisation that you could compete with some of the best players in the world. Was it that sort of feeling after that? Yeah, yeah. And like gave me a lot of confidence too. But yeah, at the same time, it just showed me like how fast that they played the game. Like yeah. it was so, and just like how technical they were, man. So um, that was the biggest thing, man. Sure. And did you feel confident going into that environment? I mean, you looked like you're always confident on the field. Did you? Did you feel like that as well, deep down? Yeah, I think um, the club season had a bit to play with it because I, I did have a pretty good club season, and then I just felt um, that I'd done the work there and like leading up to it in terms of fitness and stuff. And then that just yeah, like gave me the confidence to sort of just back myself really because and just sort of try anything because a lot of it's just you know confidence eh? like mm. um drawing from that to play your game so um i did have like goals in that there as well like that year um because dale was real big on just setting those goals but like i had like numbers that i wanted to reach competing with the super guys and stuff yeah so he he, he set out numbers that you know like these these are what the outsides at super are getting so mm. um if, if that's where you want to get to like that's what um you sort of got to get so eventually got there like it wasn't all smooth sailing like I remember I ran like a 16 something uh yo-yo oh, and sure. I was like what? and that was after like I ran like an 18 something like a month before so <laughs> no, it was like a real up down but um you yeah, eventually got there and yeah sometimes like it all just really comes down to how you play on the field really yeah like yeah. Um, but yeah it was, it was all good like um, real grateful for my experience up there, man. And you obviously played well enough to impress big man Papa Coops. Um, Colin Cooper got you down to the Chiefs. Uh, I think you in your set after your second year of NPC, eh? Yes, yeah, so it was my first year. Uh, my first year, but I got uh, I didn't really play much there. Um, so I, Rems was the coach at the time. Oh yeah. Um, I met with him because I was either going to go. Oh, I was going to go to the Blues, man. It was literally like the day before they finalised like contracts and stuff the Chiefs sort of put an offer in. So I just went in through and met with both and then yeah, just ultimately decided the the Chiefs. So I did like a day trip. Dale drove me down to Hamilton and then drove me up to the Blues and then back back up to Funners. So it's like a bit of driving. Yeah. Yeah. It's all good. Did you find that an easy decision? I always found like those sort of times decisions pretty stressful. Did you find it stressful? Yeah, man, it was, it was a real stressful, man. Like, I, I kept saying to Dale, I was like, man, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know what to do. Uh, he kept saying, like, you'd rather have, you'd rather be in that position and, you know, just 
and none at all. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll just like oh, sleep. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just like took took down the positives and the you know, the negatives and stuff, and just ultimately ultimately decided the Chiefs would be a better fit. And how'd you find it going down there? Yeah, it was cool. Like I, I was I was nervous at first. Like obviously, dudes like Liam Messon and Cruds are still around, so mm. um, real nervous at first. Um, but like those two were like the first ones to come up and say hi. Oh, yeah. So that made us, yeah, made us feel like real at home and stuff. And yeah, and to me as well. So they reached out and that was cool. So as, as the season wore on, like got slowly like more comfortable, mm. a bit too comfortable, I reckon. Like, yeah. <laughs> but like, no, I was good, man. Like, um, yeah, especially like getting to know those fellas and, you know, what made them tick and stuff. Mm. So, yeah. And your debut, how was that one? Yeah, that was cool. So that was in front of my family in Melbourne. So oh, cool. yeah, so it ended up working out. I got good the yellow carded, but um, <laughs> slapped out. Was, was it? Yeah. I, was so, it. I, 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 I was like debatable. I sort of like tip tackled uh, one of the wingers. I didn't mean to, but oh, um, yeah. you know, I just think past the horizontal line and mm. yeah, got yellowed. But um, yeah, that was that was a cool experience, man. Like um. I remember that game, Trevor, so that was cool. How did you handle that? Were you hard on yourself or were you not too bad back then? Yeah, I, oh, I wasn't I wasn't too bad. I probably was like, um, yeah, more like around my performance and stuff. Yeah. Probably just because the other boys were saying, no, nah, no, nah, it wasn't too bad. And then when you saying it wasn't too bad, it was yeah. just more um, probably just pushed a bit too hard going past the horizontal line so yeah. um, I think they uh, appreciated the, the aggression and stuff but it was probably just a bit too much really mm. but, yeah. but you, you played some awesome games for the Chiefs over those I think you were there for three years eh? any any games that sort of stand out for you? Um, I reckon the couple in Fiji so oh uh, true Crusaders yeah those two so the ones in Fiji so yeah. the Landers and the Saders we were both probably the Saders more because we came back from like a real big deficit and then yeah. Just managed to to get home, so that was a big one. Um, and you yeah, made it better that um, me and my fiance had a holiday afterwards, so oh, yeah. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. good so. <laughs> that was a good game. But, like, atmosphere was crazy. I reckon. No, oh, somehow if they can work out, like, oh, obviously once COVID and that sort of mm. um, gets controlled, like, surely take like a game or two back there. Yeah, it, awesome. it always looked like a cool occasion. Eh? They get right in behind it. They love code. Oh, 100%, bro. Yeah. Uh, big time, like, and like either side as well. So, no, it was cool atmosphere, man. They love it. Yeah. So, so how, how did you find um, being coached by Colin Cooper? Um, yeah, he was, he was he was good, man. Like, um, a real, uh, real cared about the boys. Eh? Mm. Um, he was probably the first one that sort of recognised, like, how hard I was on myself. Yeah. In terms of, because I had a game, and it was funny enough, I was against the Canes um, in Westpac. Because uh, this is when it got real bad around, um, just around me, and, like how I sort of um, perceived myself based on performances and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, had a chat with him. He was the man, bro. Like, real cares about the lads and um, big around, like, you know, like their families and stuff. But I had a convo with him after that game and sort of sat across from him and, he just asked if everything was all good and just to stop being so hard on myself and stuff like um, like rugby's like just from one part one part of my life in that. Um, but at the time I was sort of like, oh, just sort of went in, in one ear and out the other and I was just, uh, more worried about my performance and stuff. But um, yeah, and then eventually, bro, like I just broke down in front of the man, like I just started crying. Um, and to my surprise, he started to cry too, bro. Um, just for me, like, just really showed me, like, you know, like how much this guy, like, actually, like, actually cares about me and stuff, you know. And, um, he's like a, quite a reserved dude. Like, he won't say much. Yeah. But um, yeah, when I did have that convo, like, you know, I was just like shucks, like, um, you know, like this guy really cares about just like me, the person. Mm. Um, and that, yeah, that for me, like, that's I think that's why whenever I sort of ran out there. Um, I just wanted to put my best foot forward for him as well. Mm. Um, he's a, he's a, he's a good dude, man. Yeah. Um, no, like you said, he he was he is a top man. He really cares about the boys, and I um, mean, got under a bit of scrutiny for a bit there with his coaching, but mate, nothing, yeah. no complaints. Yeah, I felt sorry for him. Yeah. Like, it was 
Yeah, because I, I know like he was he was put in there like real last minute, mm. um, and you know like I think he you know he's, he did his best and people just don't really appreciate it, you know like, he was thrown there late and you know got us to some finals you know quarter finals yeah. And, so what what was your biggest fear around um, a bad performance? You know how you said like you you wouldn't really go out and stuff. So if you had a bad game, what what would that look like for you post game? Uh, so post game, yeah, I'd, well, the boys didn't know straight away. Like I just sort of just uh, just hide away in the corner in the changing room, bro, and just like head down, bro. Like just wasn't there. Um, post that, just wouldn't want to do anything. Like wouldn't want to go out. Um, or even like the next day, just wouldn't want to really do anything. Really, just sort of stay at home and um, just lounge around and stuff. And it was just oh, my biggest fear for me, bro, was probably just thinking that people were going to judge me on how I sort of played. And like, if they see me, they'll be like, oh, that's that guy that didn't play so well. And yeah. blah, blah, blah. But, you know, like that was just, again like me thinking, like overthinking things. And they probably didn't even like watch the game or even care, you know, but I was just telling myself, nah, these guys like, you know, and yeah. just like hide away till like Monday or something would come and then go back into training and would go from there. But something I'd always, and this is like, yeah, something I like always avoid then, but it was one-on-ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. So um, at least I knew it was like, oh, I felt like I played real bad then, then I'd go. But like, even if I had a good game, I'd be like, nah, I don't, I don't want to. You know, like, and it was like something I never really did um, the whole time I was sort of playing up there at the Chiefs or even yeah. at Midas and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that, just, that gave me quite a bit of nerves mm. um, just because I was like, oh, you know, like, what are they going to say? But, but, you know, like, that's the best way to learn too. It was just, I was just obviously overthinking things again. So. Yeah. Did you often get comments from people in the street or did people often recognise you? Because I feel like when I was playing... I was quite lucky that no one really knew, recognised my face. When when I, when I'd go out with like a All Black or something, one of the big dogs, I'd always oh, be dropping right. stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm glad that no one really knows me after that game because, like, like you said, when you have a shocker, it is it can be quite hard to go out and um, front the public. I think um, I didn't have as many like when I'd be out in public and stuff. It was more just on the yeah on the field, but um, where I'd sort of like copper and stuff. Um, no, I'm, I'm not really like off the top of my head. Mm. Like I was always sort of like just, oh, like they'd be keen to get a photo and like yeah. positive stuff. But yeah. A lot of mine came up from the from the field and, you know, just all that stuff when you're yeah, on there. Yeah. So yeah. I just took that with me and thought, nah, that what, you know, they might be on the street and stuff yeah. and it would make you remember. So, um, yeah, it was probably Think, more around thinking that. Thinking it's way worse than it is, eh? And just play. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, big for me. Mm. Yeah, so I've seen, I've seen like a lot of boys like, like cop it real bad, especially on social media, man. Like, um, you know, it felt real bad for them. It was something like real constant, like just every week. Like you'd see the team get named, and yeah. they'd just like, like tear into them, you know. And I was yeah. just like, like, what did they achieve from that, you know? Like, yeah. um, and you know, some of the boys were real young too, but just real commend them that you know they didn't let it. You know, affect them like too much, and um, you just eventually sort of proved them wrong. So, yeah, it, that was awesome to see. So, where were you at with social media in your career? Did you were you a big social media user, and did you cop much on it? Um, yeah, I think I sort of like more because I'd see my parents comment on a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. So, like, if they'd seen someone like comment about you know how I played and stuff. You know, I'd have to pull them back and be like, hey, you know, like, come on. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I'd have to pull them up and just be like, oh, like, they're going to see the last name. And they're like, no. <laughs> there aren't many other Marlowe's running around. So, <laughs> yeah, no, but, um, you know, I just had to sort of, like, talk to them. But I think yeah, at the same time, like, you know, they're just being parents. Um, yeah. And trying to you know, stick up for me. But I always said, like, oh, I'll just let my and sort of take care of that and if, if, if they don't like it like when they don't like it like mm-hmm. um but yeah it was just yeah i got used to it and stuff but it's just like yeah it's just slowly hacked away as well like mm. take a toll on me and yeah that just i think more of put more of a pressure on myself yeah in terms of you know just 
wanted to obviously prove them wrong, but if it didn't go right, then, um, yeah, it would just like be that constant cycle that I was talking about just yeah. week after week. Yeah. It can be quite draining, eh? So, yeah. Right. Social media has got such a positive in the game, but it can also be such a negative, eh? Like you've seen the positive side recently, being able to open up, help so many people, but throughout your career, obviously you would have felt so many negative influences from social media where you probably felt like, man, I do not want to be on here. Oh, bro, big time, man, big time. And I think, yeah, it's going to be there, eh? Like, mm. um, there will be people that, you know, like don't agree with with certain things, like, um, and, or how you play and stuff. But, yeah, like I said, just having those tools and then um, understanding that sometimes you're not going to play well, but, you know, it doesn't define you as a person. So, yeah. yeah. And then let's talk about your move down to the mighty Tasman Marco. We, how did that one come about? Yeah, so um, because I knew I knew uh, Rang, oh, um, yeah. and I thought that, yeah, it was just more of a change because they all sort of moved from from Northland, yeah, um, and then yeah, like I talked to like Nanx and those boys, and, like Finn as well, and mm. like, you know they were saying it's like awesome down there, and and then yeah, eventually like put pen to paper and um, just went down and. Bro, like, it's such a good place to, you know, especially for those three months, man. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, and the group of boys as well were awesome. Um, yeah, my partner really enjoyed it too. Mm. And, yeah, they're just, like, real tight-knit group, eh? Mm. Um, I think a lot of them have played Midas together anyway. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it, man. Like, that was awesome. Even the weather, bro, I swear, like, didn't rain. <laughs> <laughs> so <doesn't>. nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice you know like you'd have to drive like i don't know what the road's called but you just drive and it's just like the sea's right there rocks you just, like, the rocks yeah, bro. Right. Just, oh, oh, yeah. heaven <laughs> what a sight to like you know drive by like that time in the morning just yeah. to go to training yeah. just like damn this is so good yeah, um but yeah i enjoyed it very like we fell short and stuff um but yeah just yeah because the next two years i just ended up staying and in Hamilton just because we're sort of like bouncing back and forth at that time. Yeah, that can get hard, um, eh? That, that's one part of um, Super and Mitre 10 that can get really hard is having to bounce and move a family and dogs um, between regions, I guess, eh? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that, that made it hard and, like, um, hard for my um, partner to settle too. So, yeah. um, for both of us just going back and forth. So, that, like, those two years were good, like, with Waikato too. So, um, just sort of gave us a you know, foundation to build on. And then, yeah, just the move to Stags was just more around, I just wanted to play off my bro. Like, it's always been like a dream of mine to, to suit up against him. And, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that and just sort of helping him where I can and then him helping me. So. Yeah, so how old is your brother and what's what's your relationship been like? Uh, so my brother, yeah, he's, uh, damn, I think he's 22. Oh. Yeah, and our relationship, bro, has gotten a lot better. Um, we've always been sort of tight, but, like, never really talked about sort of just our upbringing and, like, how, you know, how troubled that was. Because, mm. um, yeah, we just sort of turn a blind eye to it and think, oh, you know, just didn't want to talk about it. But this last, like, well, couple of years, like, has been real big, like, because he went over to Italy and he got, he got a bit homesick, bro. So um, that was his reason for um, moving back. And yeah, since then, like we've been like real open about just making sure, like you know, that he has someone that he can talk to, and then obviously I have someone that I can, another person I can yarn to as well. So um, yeah, our relationship's gotten a lot stronger in terms of like we're already pretty strong anyway, but we just never really talked about you know like how our upbringing that affected us. Mm. Like, he's not really one to, to yarn about that stuff too um, and not really one to yarn, like, like really anyway. So yeah. oh, that was big luck like, that I got to sort of see that side of him. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's cool. So what, what part of your upbringing was um, quite hard? Like, you've mentioned a few times. So what was it about your upbringing yeah. that was? So, like, yeah, it was, it was quite a bit, man. Like, just, um, oh, it was, yeah, a lot of things, man, like um, – you know, just things we sort of wish we didn't really see and like experience because we just felt, you know, like it wasn't something that us as kids should have experienced. 
um, especially growing up. Um, but it was just like that cycle of like it was what my old man went through. Yeah. So he felt that, you know, like it was his way of dealing with like us um, that was misbehaving or just like things like that. So it was his way, like it was what he sort of, um, yeah, got brought up on. And yeah, he just felt, you know, it was, it was the only way, but um, yeah, just sort of pushed us more away from him at the time instead of gravitating towards him. Mm. And yeah, like it's, it's our relationship with our, my, my dad anyway has gotten better now because mm. I told him quite early on that I was, you know, going through this and stuff and it's been going on for a while and a lot of it, what came out of my psychiatrist and counselling session was that it was to do with what I experienced and the trauma that I experienced as a kid yeah, um, and all that. So, and it didn't like, that convo didn't go too well at first. Like he's a pretty um, staunch man, which is like, nah, but yeah. Um, since then, like it's been good. It probably took like a couple of weeks or three weeks, and you know we had another convo, and like he sort of realised that actually like like something wasn't right, and yeah, he ended up getting counselling too, man. So oh, I, I didn't even yeah, so I didn't even like, and he'd been um had a, his brothers and stuff had always tried to to yarn to him and tell him that uh, man you might need to go like see someone about this stuff, and but he was always like nah, um, just pretty staunch and was like nah, well, I don't need that and stuff and. Like three weeks later, after our first convo, he just I messaged him and he messaged back saying that he, he's getting counselling and stuff. And, you know, like he apologised for, you know, some of the stuff that happened um, to us as kids. And, um, yeah, so that was like, that was cool, man. Like, because oh, I didn't even, you know, mention to him that, like, I was getting counselling or anything. Like, he just went on, like, he felt like, no, nah, actually, I need to go talk to someone and, um open out open up and you know like get another perspective on on how he sort of did things so um that was real cool um and yeah we've been in touch um just checking in on him and how he's doing and how his counts he's going and he does the same to me so uh, it's cool man that is cool eh? it's good to hear so when did you first think of going to a counselor like what age were you going and what sort of impact did that have on you um so i bro so i didn't like i wish i did reach out when i was younger and stuff mm. Um, but I, I, yeah, it wasn't until literally like this year, man. And that was because I just, like I said, I, I felt too scared to to sort of reach out because I felt like it might affect my um, footy and stuff, mm. like in terms of like selection and stuff. So yeah. I felt like, nah, if I say something, like they'll be like, nah, this guy's not mentally right and stuff to to take the field and don't lose trust and stuff. But like I said like, before, like that was me overthinking and stuff. And, yeah, like it wasn't until this year, like not long after that Canes game, like it took me probably oh, maybe a week or two because I had to go into the the psych ward anyway, just because I had like, that was when I was real bad, like just got real bad just in terms of like the things I was thinking and like not wanting to be around and stuff. And oh, really? Shit. Yeah, yeah. So I got that bad, bro, that I was just like, nah, like, um, so I had to check in once a week, but they would ring me and be like, oh, like how are you going and stuff and um like are there any like dark thoughts and stuff and um yeah i'd be like oh like not too bad today or i'd be like yeah it's been pretty bad today and yeah like those first two weeks like i felt like no nah, like this isn't going to get any better but like our pdm sonia always said that the first two weeks was always going to be hard especially adjusting to because i'm still on meds and stuff too bro yeah yeah, like adjusting to obviously the meds and stuff and like for them to kick in. So, yeah, the first two weeks was hard because I wasn't doing anything. Like, you're yeah, missing the boys and stuff and like wasn't training. So I was losing weight and mm. um, like I was real like self-conscious around my weight and stuff because um, I was I was bullied as a kid like just because I was quite skinny and stuff. Oh, really? Through school? Um, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. And just like in general, like... um up until I was like, you know, probably like 18 or something. Like I was just saying that I'd always, but like, you know, like some of it was like a bit of banter and then, but yeah. some of it, you know, like was quite like sort of hit home as well, just cause I knew that like I was, it was something that I was real self-conscious about. And yeah, so I lost heaps of weight as well. And like, that wasn't like for me, like, yeah, it didn't give me much confidence and I just felt like everything else wasn't going right. Like rugby wasn't going right. And then, yeah, like after those two weeks, man, it just started to look up. So started to go to the gym with my partner and because she worked at a gym across from 
the Highlanders. Mm. Um, and I don't know, I, I felt like I, you know, like I had no confidence in like myself, like in what I like looked like and, you know, felt like. So um, I didn't really want to go gym. But because her gym was pretty quiet, yeah, she just said, oh, she'll talk to her boss and see if it's all good if I go in with her. Um, and yeah, just sort of like worked on it from there and set a few goals that I wanted to achieve over that like next sort of short period, like two weeks mm. in terms of just getting my weight back on and like that was something like ticked off that could give me a bit of confidence. And then yeah. I put like, yeah, I dropped like 10 gigs in the space of 10 weeks, but oh, wow. I like, put on 12 in the space of two minutes just from eating and stuff. Oh, and sure. That was awesome for me. Like gave me a bit of confidence and then, yeah, just sort of snowballed effect and then everything else sort of just started to go a bit better and, like I said, man, there were days where I was like, oh, you know, like, nah, but I'll just say to my, uh, say to Sav that, you know, I wasn't feeling too good and stuff. And, you know, she'll just reassure me and just support me through it and be like, no, it's all good. It's just another, you know, like those days will be there. You just got to do things to, to make you feel better and stuff. So, yeah. How, how important is exercise, you think, for your for your mental state? Yeah, bro, I think big time, mate, because... Yeah, that, that getting taken away from me for those two weeks anyway, yeah, it's pretty big, eh? Just to keep you active and mm. the mind active too. And, yeah, it gives you confidence that, you know, you got something or you did something to give you a bit of boost for the day. So mm. just if you can do it with – I reckon that's, like, why group training is so big nowadays, eh? Like, because, yeah. you know, you're with people that are on sort of a similar route and want to achieve similar things. So, yeah. yeah. Were any of the boys really good with you? Like when you were struggling, or did anyone really reach out and sort of help you along? Um, yeah, man. So it's, Scuds was real big, eh? Like oh, no for doubt. me, lad. Yeah. So I think like because at first they told the team that it was just personal reasons and just sort of respect my space and stuff. And if they wanted the message, they could, but like not sort of feel like they had to and mm. all that. So um, I think Scuds reached out like a I think. A week or so after and he was big around a lot reassuring me that he was there if i didn't need anything mm. and um i think I, I had a combo with the man when i started training with the injured boys i think it was my first week properly in with the injured boys and yeah he just opened up about you know his struggles and stuff and um you know and that really reassured me that man like i like i wasn't the only one and someone that i looked up to especially like growing up and stuff mm. um like scuds um, had his troubles too so um, for someone to you know like he, he he just came over to me and we're in the gym bro like yeah. he's supposed to be like resting and stuff and he just walked over and was like bro like um, how are you and stuff um, it was like good and then yeah just started talking about just being real vulnerable around that space and um, like I'll, I'll always hold that combo close to my heart because um, you know like that's sort of what kick started like or like made me feel like yeah like I can actually like talk to like the other boys about it mm. um, and it was like to my surprise well it surprised me like how many of the boys actually you know were you know feeling that way and a lot of the time it is like the injured boys because you know like the rugby's yeah. getting taken away from them for a certain amount of time yeah. so um, yeah it was it was cool man and I think that's something that'll stick with me was this that to make sure that like if I am like playing and stuff as well like just the because a lot of the time it can be just that sort of playing group and mm. the injured boys are on their own sort of journey back to playing. Yeah. And yeah, I think it just made me sort of like a lot more grateful that that if I was like playing or in the playing group, just to take recognition in terms of like seeing like those injured boys and you know like all it takes is just bro, you came for a coffee or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. So if, I, if I'm ever in that in that space again, like um, that's like something I've learned big time. So. Mm. Yeah, like you say, those the, the injured group is always it's always a mental struggle when you're out injured, especially long term, and you can't quite see the end. I know a lot of the guys with concussion, in particular, when you don't have a date to come back on and stuff like that, it can be a real struggle in those injured groups. But mate, that's awesome to hear. Scuds yeah. is still still the man he he was at the Canes. He's an absolute legend. I eh? love that guy. My champ, bro. He's the man. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was like him and yeah, I had a few other fellas too that reached out but he was like he was the big one man that sort of just kept like nudging away so yeah bro mm. just pretty grateful grateful that um, he was down there this year man mm. so so you've signed with the highlanders did you sign for a three year did you 
So you got two more years? Yeah, bro. So I'll be there till twenty twenty three. True. Yeah, so I've got just yeah, two more years down there and see how it goes, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I'm excited. Yeah, for the next year or oh, next season to come along. Yeah. Just gonna get some footy under my belt. Yeah. For the stags. Hundred percent. Are you are you confident about next season? Confident that you'll be able to perform to the level that we all know you can? Yeah, I think I reckon I'm yeah, quite excited about it because I could I can't get any lower than like about how I felt mm. you know I did this year. And as well as that, like um you know, like I've yeah, I just know if things don't go right, like it's not the end of the world. Um, it just like that experience this year just made me realise that there's so much more to to my life than just rugby. Mm. Like, and I do have other things that make me happy. Um, so it's not like the end of the world if I don't, you know, make the 23 or anything like that. But I'm like real confident that come next year, man, like, um, like I could put my best foot forward, especially going down to the stacks and sort of add value where I can there. Uh, getting to play with my brother, I reckon, adds a bit of, you know, like a lot more excitement too. So, yeah, uh, I'm yeah, real excited, bro. Just can't wait to suit up against him, man. Mate, how dangerous are the brothers going to be down there for the stags? <laughs> he's going to be on absolute fire. Nah, hopefully, bro. He's, he's, he's a different player to me. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, I just got to keep him in check every now and then, man. <laughs> he acts a bit too much on the field. <laughs> Different, man. <laughs> it's, it's so funny, bro. I always, I always get told as well that like everyone reckons he's the older brother when oh, they first yeah, yeah. sort of see him. Yeah, and then like they see me like because I think on the weekend my father uh, son that her partner's like little cousins were like, oh that guy looks like um like Charles's little brother. Oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, oh. Well, I get it heaps, man. But oh, yeah. uh, it's all good. Face, <laughs> right? just Still looking like, young, yeah. eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hard. this is positive. <laughs> <laughs> but you mentioned about um, other things outside of footy. So, have you got much of a plan after rugby? Have you have you looked that far ahead? I know you're still young. Yeah, um, I didn't really take it seriously at first, like my first like, three or four years. But um, started looking into the police this year. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, so that's cool. Um, our PDM sort of sorted some stuff. For, what, there was like three of us or four of us that were real keen on it. Yeah. Um, so like that's something I'm real interested in um, post post footy um, because my yeah, partner's stepdad's uh, in the force and but he's like quite like yeah does like special tactics and stuff like oh, that sure. sort of stuff yeah 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 he showed me some training videos and stuff and this stuff looks cool bro <laughs> 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 so like yeah it'll take a while to get to like where he is but yeah yeah that, yeah that would be something cool to sort of um, do post rugby and then. Um, I don't know what else like. Um, I've talked to my partner about um, becoming a dog, like a German Shepherd uh, dog breeder. Eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dog like, breeder. But, like yeah. nothing too, you know, like yeah. just because she's always loved dogs. But yeah. I just sort of started once we got ours, and I didn't really like. I didn't really like dogs. I was always afraid of them, but because um, <laughs> our our Shepherd's quite from a good line and stuff. So yeah, um, yeah like that's something I'd probably be keen on especially because um we yeah, really love dogs so. how good's that <laughs> the dog <breeder. laughs> you'd be one of the greats <laughs> yeah, yeah hard. that'd be unreal there's like yeah all the sort of paperwork and admin stuff that we'd have to do but yeah. i reckon it'll be like um worth it in the end mm. oh cool <laughs> geez i'm looking forward to that come get a dog off you <laughs> yeah, hopefully <bro. laughs> this is my big farm or something man. Uh, yeah. holy this market at the moment ain't helping oh, <laughs> crazy eh? but anyway yeah. as always we've gone to our instagram for some questions and holy heckers you've come up with plenty here lots about whether you're going to be lacing the boots up with the stags this season you've already answered that um you are going to be and you're going to be on fire but first question favorite memory at st beads uh probably my kept game against uh mobile boys man um at mobile boys oh yeah so, was my yeah and cats are they get school yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was cool man like that was my uh, best memory nice have you been asked to play for samoa no i haven't um i've had like a yarn to the coach this year when he came in but i haven't been asked um 
I reckon I'd be pretty keen to just be the timing and stuff as well. We like, um, yeah, they've got a pretty good team and it's cool to see like a new rollover like or turnover of new players in there, mm. especially from our uh, boys. Or, like, half of the boys are from NZ too. So I'll be pretty keen to be something to look into like, for the next year or so. Yeah. Like, World the... Cup looming. No, no, how <laughs> yeah. good would that be? Oh, well, that'd be unreal. Yeah, yeah he's good stuff. <laughs> Okay, next question. Best player you've played against? Um, oh, there's been heaps, man. But this player I've played against, like well, I um, don't really have to mark him. Probably, I reckon probably Richibo. Yeah. He's been, uh, yeah, Richie Mulder, man. He's unreal. Eh? Just, holy, he's just like, yeah, how important he is to those boys down there. And then, yeah, um, yeah just an NZ rugby, generally, bro. He's, he's a freak, eh? Because I've seen him play, like, touch and stuff and played with him. Like a year, and I think it was age rated like 18s, maybe. Mm. But uh, he's just taken his game to another level. Like, yeah, he yeah, is. He's just awesome to watch, too. Bro. Just absolutely killing it at the moment, isn't he? And he has for the last sort of three years, just absolutely on fire. Bro, right, huh? And just his footwork and just everything, eh? Like, mm. so slick, man. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> just so you know, like, exciting player to watch. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Would you consider moving to the NRL? Yeah, I, oh, bro, I, I, I almost did last year. Eh? Oh, yeah? Yeah, so I um, I got a dude to look into league for me last year, but this was like um, when I was – because I've been going in and out of it, like I was saying before about um, – and trying to find happiness somewhere else. But, you know, like that was just my way of sort of masking how – like I was feeling at the time, you know. Yeah. But I got the bro to reach out, um, and he had like four same clubs that were interested to oh, wow. fly me over and sort of um, – play that second half of the, the NRL season because oh, Super would have been finished. Yeah, but I was just, yeah, I, I couldn't do it. Eh? Just because, one, I hadn't played the game um, before and then, two, just like for us to just get up and move like to Australia for the back end of the season, like that would have been hard as well. So, mm. um, yeah, like I reckon it, uh, I, I would, I would, bro. I reckon it would be cool, um, cool experience. But, um, yeah, just... Would be wing, yeah. What position were, were you going to play, wing? Center. Oh, bro, because uh, they were saying, yeah, like centre, centre, centre wing. So, oh, yeah. um, so they got hold of my hey, Stephen Crichton, <laughs> <can> like, <"Hally."> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> the lads always because I always say, like, no, nah, I'm, I'm busy or um, or <laughs> law, and they're always like, nah, man, you're Crichton, bro, <laughs> <laughs> you're straight up yeah. Crichton, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Um, yeah, that would be like yeah, cool as well. Because I watch a lot more of league than I do rugby. Oh, so yeah. Um, yeah, it's cool to watch. Yeah, yeah it's a good game. Eh? I'm on the same. Just addicted to Super Coach and my fantasy team. <laughs> oh, you yeah, do that constantly. as well. Yeah, yeah. It just gives you a vested Yo. interest in it. I always like even if a union game's on, I'll be like, man, wonder how my um, boys are going on the other channel. <laughs> like check their yeah. scores and things huh. like that. Eh? Next question. In your opinion, what do we need to do to drop youth suicide numbers? Um, well, I wouldn't be able to put it down to one thing, right? It's probably yeah. multiple things, eh? Like, um, Tough question. Yeah, yeah big time, bro. <laughs> um, I don't know, just, maybe just checking in on your mates, man. Yeah. Um, you know, all it takes is a like, text or a, bro, like, how you doing? Mm. And then things can just kick off from there because you're most vulnerable when you're with your closest mates. Say, eh? like if you're comfortable to open up to them, then you know that's give you that gives you something, someone to to vent to, and um, yeah, the rest sort of will just go from there. And um, yeah, I've, I've seen those uh, stats, eh? and it's it's like real saddening, yeah, man. No, um, yeah, because yeah, I've I've had a few, um, especially growing up, like. Um, because we're like in the church and stuff too, and a couple of boys had taken their life, taken their life and stuff, and I mean, that was like hard. And he was a up and coming um, league player as well. So um, I, I think there's some chat around, like it felt like you know, just the pressure of um, having to crack it at that age. And he was only a young man, like. Oh, like he wouldn't have, he would have just maybe turned 18 or something, oh, yeah. but younger men, yeah. And um, so I'll, right up those, yeah, those stats are like definitely 
sanding, man. Mm. I, w- I couldn't put it down to one thing, eh? Like, mm. It's just so much we need to change. Like, yeah. Yeah, just realising that, like, talking is, is, is okay. Well, that's a good start, but, yeah, like we said, it's a tough question. And going from uh, quite a deep question to not so much, best night spot in the Tron? <laughs> um, probably the house, man. Is it? Oh. The house. <laughs> <laughs> the house, uh, yeah, probably the house. Um, yeah, um, that's a pretty good spot. And all the all the lads, new partners go here too, bro. So it bangs and goes off. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, two more. How will you cope in the future after a setback or a bad game? Uh, f- for me, because um, I know now that it's like I said before, it's it's not everything. Um, but after, if I do have a, like, like sort of a, a bad game, just, just rather than going into that place, um, just talking to the coaches or around where I do need to sort of improve. And a lot of the time, like I'll know anyway, but it's just, um, getting their, their opinion, just reassuring that too, but, um, and not being so hard on myself. That's the main thing for me, bro. Just, um, and I know that now too. Like last week, I didn't have the best of games because you know it was the first game back in a while. But I just kept looking, thinking, you know, like I was just grateful that I was running around and playing some some form of code, mm-hmm. and just you know rubbing shoulders with a good good bunch a like, good bunch of blokes. So and playing with the bros. So um, I think that's the main thing, man. Is that knowing that I'll get another week to put my best foot forward and you know it's not the end of the world if I you know have a bad game yeah that's true like rugby you are judged on your weekly performance but there's always the next week eh? like you're only as good as you play the following week really eh? so um, even if you have an awesome game it's quite it sometimes can be easy to think you're better than you are and then the following week you can be brought back straight down to reality eh? with a shocker so <laughs> it's pretty yeah, right. you've got to keep your emotions intact yeah, and that's a big thing, eh? Like, I reckon, like, it's like it is like an emotional roller coaster, eh? Like, mm. I think that's, yeah, something I've learned along the way. It's just, um, like, I'm going to have highs and lows, and we are going to have highs and lows. It's just, just recognizing it, too. So. And enjoy it, yeah, 100%. Ah, bro, exactly. Okay, last question. One piece of advice for someone going through a tough time? Um, yeah, just it's okay to, to open up and talk about how you're feeling, like, you're. Your feelings are validate. Um, that would be my big one. Just you're feeling that way for, like for a certain reason, and it's okay to yarn about it. Mm. And yeah, just you're not alone. Really, like, that's the main thing, bro. Just you're not alone. Like there are others as well that you can yarn to about, it, bro. So, yeah. Powerful stuff, and mate, you've led by example um, by speaking out, putting it on your posts. It's if, Honestly, I had so many messages from people, like, and I didn't even post the post, but people asking to get you on and to get a little bit more insight because they could see what a positive effect you could have on so many people now. So, mate, really appreciate you coming on the podcast, opening up, being so vulnerable. Um, I know a lot of people get a lot out of that. Like we've talked about, youth suicide rates in New Zealand are, are shocking at the moment and we need to do something about it. And if talking about it's the first point on a platform like this where hopefully people will listen to it, um, well, then that's that's what we can do and to hopefully um, help some people who are going through a tough time. And, and if you are going through a tough time, uh, please do open up to someone you are comfortable with, whether it is messaging myself or Solomon. Like either of us will be happy to um, respond to you and help you out if you are struggling. But like I said, mate, really appreciate you coming on. It's been awesome to go through your journey, get a little bit of insight into um, what you've been going through. And, mate, super excited to see you out there for the Stags this year. I reckon you're going to absolutely light it up and um, light up the Highlanders' back line next season as well. Oh, cheers, bro. Thanks for having us on. You're a man, bro. <laughs> no um, worries, bro. You're a legend. Cheers, bro. Thanks, bro.